cranes are very beautiful birds. They are very large birds. They are the world's tallest flying bird. They range from 35 inches to 69 inches. Any of you know, any of you know who my heart is? Hold on, you might guys tweet it that they did those. Now, flying is a young woman. She considers herself, I believe, an amateur mask musician. Lots of people talk about the reality of, say, an elephant in Oregon. You know, does it look real? Does it look like an elephant? But it's a piece of paper. You know, of course it can't look like an elephant. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just had the craziest dream. It was all about origami. Can you imagine that? I don't even know anything about origami. Neither do you? Why don't you check this out? Origami translates literally in Japanese to folding paper. Folding paper is really fun and stress relieving. It's a hands-on phenomenon where you have full control. The blank paper is a universe of exploration. Origami intertwines math and art until they are almost indistinguishable. I wanted to look into this phenomenon as a follow-up to my Flexicon Explorations in the Group project. In this project, however, I wanted to start from a simpler standpoint, with no template or goal in mind. I limited myself to regular paper folding, only in efforts to avoid complexity. No wet folding, or no paper cutting. I need to go over some definitions that may be simple, but the subtleties are consequential. A point is a single spot on a plane. Points exist in two planes at the same time. This can be shown easily with a marker that bleeds through the paper. A line is a result of a fold. A line can intersect any two given points on the same plane. I have found no other counterexample. An edge is a boundary between paper and no paper. It's advantageous to consider an edge as a line when it comes to calculating Hamilton cycles. A vertex is the point where two lines intersect, or where a line intersects an edge. A plane is the space on the paper separated by lines and edges. Every paper starts with two planes, one on each side. With each fold, more planes are added. A point exists on exactly two planes, in fact, inverse planes. You can see point P1 on the plane 7 and on the inverse, plane 3. There are some truths and some limitations to paper folding. Understanding these characteristics will help you see the difference between the Euclidean plane the non-Euclidean plane, and the paper canvas. I came up with a few examples to show you. Given two points, or two lines, there is a fold that passes through them. Given two points, or two lines, there is a fold that places them on each other. To expand on this idea, given two points and two lines, there is a fold that puts one point onto one line, and the second point onto the second line. Given a point and a line, there is a fold that is perpendicular to the given line that passes through the point. And yes, all planes are too colorable, I guarantee. I wanted to see if there was a bound on any number of vertices a single fold could create. I wanted to be noble and have the answer be just a single number. But you know, I found out it's just not that simple. I found a clever way to create a bunch of vertices in a single fold. Take the edge and fold it over. Repeat that task as many times as you please. Then fold the paper in half. Now you have several new vertices with that given fold. Theoretically, you could make infinitely many tiny folds infinitely many times. Fold that in half, and then you have a single fold that creates an infinite amount of vertices. Obviously, we can't physically do this. The cool thing about origami is that it is not about theory as much as it is about the physical world. Mythbusters does a really cool episode about the limitations of the number of times you could fold a paper. 
I went ahead and folded up a paper swan. Then, I unfolded the swan and bolded in every line and highlighted every vertex. As you can see, this resulted in a pretty sweet design. The first thing that caught my attention was the symmetry of the shape. I saw two lines of symmetry on the paper. I also noticed that the lines of symmetry intersected the wings and the head of the 3D swan. I don't think this is a coincidence. So I repeated the process with a frog, a paper airplane, and a cube. The airplane radiates lines from the center point, and the frog only has one line of symmetry down the middle. The cube has every possible line of symmetry that a square can have. When compared to 3D objects, I saw stunning results. The airplane has only one line of symmetry down the middle. The frog only had one right down the middle too. The cube had seemingly endless lines of symmetry, but when you look at a single given side, the square has the same four lines of symmetry as the 2D graph. There's certainly a correlation between 2D and 3D symmetry. After staring at these cool designs for quite a while, I started to connect the dots, no pun intended. I wanted to see if these graphs had special properties. Hamilton cycles, or Euler's circuits came to mind first. The complicated graphs were really frustrating. When it came to analyzing the Euler circuits, I didn't even know if they existed. Can you visit every edge exactly once? So I did a little bit of online research to help me out with this one. I found out because an Euler circuit cannot occur in a graph that has a vertex with an odd degree, it turns out none of these graphs have Euler circuits. You could see in every one a vertex of an odd degree, if you count the edge as a line. Hamilton cycles, being able to visit every vertex exactly once, are much easier to find. It turns out that all the graphs have Hamilton cycles, if you include the edges as lines. I feel like this makes sense to some degree, because vertices are created by folds. You cannot make a fold with only one vertex. Degrees of vertices depend on the number of lines and folds. It would not be uncommon to see a vertex of degree 3, and therefore, no Euler circuit. Would my conjecture still hold up with this cool origami snake? I would like to test the lines of symmetry with some other radial shapes, like a flower or a shell. A 20-sided shape would be another shape that I would like to explore to test out the symmetry. Also, I would like to try to fold myself into a giant life-size paper cube. When I compare my findings with the flexagon, I see that this shape is an exception to almost everything I came up with. The symmetry of the original 2D graph does not match the 3D results at all. This shape uses a lot of the same rules and follows the axioms of origami, but it's an entirely different beast. The flexagon is a very special shape, but it's still paper folding. I cannot simply dismiss the flexagon as an exception to everything. There must be more secrets between the folds that I have not discovered.